to welcome us once again on behalf of the university management to the 28th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. We shall begin the procession very, very shortly. Please, can we be seated? Our kings and queens, can you conduct yourselves with utmost sense of responsibility? See you, Ban. Please, can we all rise for the procession? Can we please rise for the procession? We want to receive the university management, the university principal officers, our distinguished professors, That is the procession for the 28th inaugural lecture today, June 24th, 2022. In the procession are the distinguished professors, eminent officers of the university, principal officers, and of course the university management. In the procession we have the acting director, physical planning and development, Bida Akinolua. We have the heads of departments, the Dean of College of Science and Technology, Professor Timothy A. Aneke, the Dean College of Engineering, Professor David O. Ulukoni. We have in the procession as well the Dean College of Management and Social Sciences. Professor Abiola Babajide. Also in this beautiful procession is the Dean of College of Leadership and Development Studies, Professor Charles Ubulogo. Again, we have the Dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Akan B. Williams. We welcome our esteemed professors, our distinguished faculty members, our principal officers of the university, and the university management. Also in this procession is the university chaplain, Pastor Victor Hill. In the procession as well is the Dean of Students Affairs, Professor David Imonopi. We have the Acting Director, Fiscal Planning and Development, the Director of Financial Services, Pastor Benga Kiki. Those are the deans of our esteemed colleges, members of management, and principal officers of the university. We have Acting Director for Center for Learning Resources, Dr. Messi Rab Ganachi. We have the Acting Registrar of Covenant University, Mr. Emmanuel K. Iban, and the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodu H. Adebayo. We welcome our Secretary of Board of Regents, Distinguished Regents, the Chancellor of Covenant University. And I welcome our kings and queens. Thank you, C. Uban. Please may we be seated. On behalf of the university management, it's my singular honor and privilege again to welcome us to the 28th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. The lecture has been well titled, Safe Food for Sustainable Development of the Packets of Microorganisms Guided by Divine Essence. I respectfully want to invite the chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Victor Hill, to lead us in opening prayers. 
and immediately after the opening prayers, we should kindly remain standing while the CU band leads us in the national anthem and the CU anthem in that sequence. Pastor Victor Hilsa, please can we put our hands together for him? Shall we rise to our feet right now? And we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you for another time of inaugural lecture like this. Blessed be the name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we commit the program into your hand. Honor us with your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your hand be upon the presenter this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as he stands to speak, let your glory fill the house in the name of Jesus Christ. Give everyone a hearing ear and a receptive heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, it will be a time of refreshing from above in the name of Jesus Christ. An impartation of great knowledge from above in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for everything. Blessed be the name of Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the whole event, we promise to return all glory to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. For in Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. may we be seated. Again this afternoon is my singular privilege and honor to welcome a distinguished audience on behalf of University Management to our 28th inaugural lecture today 
Friday, June 24th, 2022. As I recapped at the beginning, today's lecture has been well titled, Safe Food for Sustainable Development of the Packets of Microorganisms Guided by Divine Essence. At this point, with the permission of the Vice Chancellor, I would like to set the protocol for this very important event. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Dr. David Oyedebo, the Pro-Chancellor of Covenant University, Bishop David Abioye, esteemed members of the Board of Regents here present, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodu H. Adebayo, the Acting Registrar of our University, Mr. Emmanuel Iban, other Principal Officers of University here present, Deans of our colleges and School of Postgraduate Studies, members of the University Senate, the inaugural lecturer of today, faculty and staff of Covenant University here present, distinguished guests, kings and queens in Hebron, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please, can you put your hands together for yourselves? At this juncture, I would like to invite the Acting Registrar of Covenant University, Mr. Emmanuel Iban, to bring us to introduce the key officers of the university. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, sir. It's my honor and privilege this afternoon to introduce members of the high table. Seated on the extreme left, we have the university chaplain, Pastor Victor Hill. You are welcome, sir. <clears throat> Next to him is the director of financial services in the person of Pastor Olubenga Kiki. You are welcome. Seated next to him is the man of the moment whom I am not permitted to introduce. But for the sake of this introduction, I just want to say he is the lecturer of today in the person of Professor Solomon Oranusi. <clears throat> Moving to the right side of the table, we have the dean College of Science and Technology. Okay, we have the Dean, College of Engineering, in the person of Professor David Olukoni. You are welcome, sir. Seated next to him is the Dean, College of Science and Technology, Professor Timothy Anake. You are welcome. Next to him is the Dean in the College of Business Management in the College of Management and Social Sciences in the person of Professor Abiola Babajide, you are welcome. Next to her is the Dean of the Deans, talking of the Dean of Postgraduate Studies in the person of Professor Aka William, you are welcome. At this point, it's my honor and privilege to introduce the amiable Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodu H. Adebayo, you are welcome, sir. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Igban, the acting registrar. Once again, you are welcome to this inaugural lecture. Can we please put our hands together again for the acting registrar of Covenant University, Mr. Emmanuel Igban. It's my honor to invite to the podium the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodu H. Adebayo, to bring us his welcome remarks. Thank you so much. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of our dear university, Dr. David O. Oyedepo, 
I like to stand on the already established protocol as I bring my remark at this 28th inaugural lecture of Covenant University today. I'd like to welcome you to this inaugural lecture, the 28th in our inaugural lecture series titled Healthy Food for Sustainable Development of the Packets of Microorganisms Guided by Divine Essence. We are delighted to present another topical issues that addresses a fundamental aspect of our national life and sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goals, that is SDGs, were formulated as a global scheme to harness the world's unprecedented competencies, creativity, technology, and means to terminate deprivation and human sufferings being endured by millions globally. SDG 2 particularly seeks to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition within the framework of sustainable food system. Available data suggests that presently, more than 3 billion people are malnourished, and a substantial number of the Earth's 7 billion population eat low nutritional foods. Simultaneously, global population is growing, and it is estimated to reach 10 billion by 2050, with Nigeria becoming the third largest, most populous country in the world. Undeniably, the quality of food and diet are critical to healthy living. According to the 2020 Global Nutrition Report, poor diet is the leading cause of death and disease worldwide when compared to other major global health challenges. The report states that the resulting global malnutrition crisis is manifesting as underweight, stunting, micronutrient deficiencies, wasting, obesity, overweight, cardiovascular disease, diabetics, cancer. In Africa, the report shows that an average of 38.1% of women of reproductive age have anemia, and 8.1% of the adult women have diabetes, compared to 7.9% of men. Meanwhile, 17% of women and 7% of men have obesity. An estimated 600 million, that is almost one in 10 people in the world, fall ill after eating contaminated food and 420,000 die every year, resulting in the loss of 33 million healthy life year. Nearly 110 billion US dollars is lost each year in productivity and medical expenses, resulting from unsafe food in low and middle income countries. Consequently, thoughts of healthy food for sustainable development objectives are to ensure sufficient food and access to high quality and nutritious food for the expanded population. Critical to this objective is in-depth knowledge and understanding of the role of microorganisms in producing healthy foods. Microorganisms, despite their small sizes, are critical to food production and processing. Nature uses microorganisms to carry out fermentation processes which transform and preserve food to improve its nutritional and organoleptic qualities. A well-conducted fermentation will favor useful flora to the detriment of the undesirable flora in order to prevent spoilage and promote taste and texture. Food loss by either spoilage or contaminated food affects food industry and consumers, leading to economic losses and increased hospitalization costs. As a university, we shall remain committed to promoting research efforts towards evolving innovative solutions in facilitating the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. It's our hope that the shared knowledge and recommendations at this inaugural lecture will promote all the key stakeholders in the food industry 
to begin to take actionable steps towards harnessing the huge benefits by employing microorganisms for healthy foods and sustainable development. I wish to congratulate the inaugural lecturer for this milestone in his academic career and his outstanding contributions to the field of microbiology. Let me again welcome you to this lecture and thanking you for a great time even in this inaugural lecture series today. Again, thank you for coming and God richly bless you. That was the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodu K. Shadevayo. Please, can we applaud him louder? Thank you so much, sir. At this point, I want to kindly invite Dr. Isaac Anyonda to read the citation of the guest lecturer to this distinguished audience. Please, can we welcome him to the podium? Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of Covenant University, Dr. David O. Oyedepo, the Pro Chancellor of Covenant University, Bishop David Abioye, esteemed members of the Board of Regents of Covenant University here present, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo, the Acting Registrar of Covenant University, Mr. Emmanuel Iban. Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. May I respectfully request that Professor Solomon Oranosi stand and please remain standing while I take his citation. Solomon Oranosi had his primary and secondary school education at LSMB Sabongeri and the famous Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder Memorial College in Lokoja, Kogi State. He proceeded to the prestigious University of Nigeria, Onsuka, for his tertiary education, where he obtained a BSc degree in microbiology in the year 1992. He had his master's and PhD degree in microbiology specializing in food and industrial microbiology from the Amandu Bello University, Zaria, in the years 1997 and 2002, respectively. He wrote and passed the exam of the body of the medical lab scientist and qualified as a registered medical lab scientist specializing in bacteriology and parasitology in the year 2004. The young man, Solomon Oranusi, worked as a science teacher in Barewa College and St. Bartholomew School, both in Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria, between the years 1993 and 1999. During this period, he served as the HOD science. He worked as a medical laboratory scientist in Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital, Zaria, and he lectured in the School of Medical Laboratory Sciences and School of Nursing, Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital, Zaria, between the years 2000 and 2004. Thereafter, he lectured in departments of biological sciences, department of environmental sciences, and department of medical laboratory sciences of Igbinedon University, or CADA, between the year 2004 and 2008. During this period, he served as the acting HOD to both the department of biological sciences and environmental sciences of Igbinedon University, or CADA. Later, he worked briefly as a lecturer and pioneer head of the Department of Biological Sciences in Western Delta University, O'Hara, Delta State, Nigeria. He joined the services of Covenant University in the year 2008 and was promoted to the rank of a full professor in Covenant University in the year 2015. He has served Covenant University in various capacities, including as coordinator, microbiology program, Department of Biological Sciences, coordinator, department and college postgraduate program, chairperson, university publication committee, twice co-chair CU ICADI, 
Chair Convocation Planning Committee, Chair Covenant University Farm Board, Chair Faculty and Staff Disciplinary Committee, to mention but a few. Professor Solomon Oranusi also served as the sub dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Covenant University, between the year 2014 and 2016. He is currently the head of the Department of Biological Sciences, Covenant University, a position he has held since the 2019-2020 academic session. He is also currently a member of the University Administration Board. Professor Solomon Oranusi has successfully supervised eight PhD students while five are currently undergoing supervision under him, all in the field of microbiology. <laughs> he is a reviewer and member of the editorial board of several scientific journals. He has served as examiner to several postgraduate theses and dissertations and as an assessor for the promotion to the rank of professorial cadre of academic institutions including the University of Johannesburg, South Africa, and McPherson University. He has published over 150 peer-reviewed scientific articles in both local and international journals. He is a fellow of the Institute of Medical Laboratory Sciences of Nigeria and a registered public analyst. Professor Solomon Oranusi is a member of several international and national professional organizations his current research is in human micro, microbiome in health and diseases, hazard analysis and critical control points, food and environmental safety, probiotics optimization and standardization, and commercialization of local fermented foods, and also bioenergy from food and agricultural wastes. Professor Solomon Oranusi is married to Dr. Uloma Chikaoji, and the marriage is blessed with three glorious children. Glory Ibukun Olua, David Olua Gbemiga, and Peace Love Modupe Olua. Ladies and gentlemen, my request that we please rise and put our hands together as I invite to the podium the 28th inaugural lecturer of Covenant University, Professor Solomon Oranusi, to deliver his lecture. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Convent University, Dr. David O. Oyedepo. The Vice Chancellor of Convenant University, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo. Permit me to stand on the already established protocol as I present my inaugural lecture following the outline as presented above. To God be the glory for the opportunity of life granted me. I appreciate the Chancellor, the Pro-Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor Covenant University and University Management for the honor to stand before this great audience of intellectuals to present the 28th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. This lecture is the 10th from the College of Science and Technology and the 3rd from the Department of Biological Sciences. Listening to the past 27 inaugural lectures in this glorious audience and chapel, one would wonder if any area of study is left out, and if any other lecture would ever be better than the other inaugural lectures that have been presented. Fortunately for me, the inaugural lecture is not a platform for note comparison, but an opportunity for one to give account of stewardship in one's choosing field of endeavor. The Chancellor, sir. I am eternally grateful to God for specially preserving my life for this day. God, in his infinite mercy, used today's topic of inaugural lecture to preserve my life when on Sunday 4th of March 2018, at about 4.30 p.m., I was heading to the office to prepare for the week's lecture. 
I had a very clear voice that says, your inaugural lecture, right. Of course, I ignored the voice because I was not near anywhere to present an inaugural lecture four to five to six years ago. However, the voice spoke a second time and louder. Your inaugural lecture, right. I had to stop at that point in time to pen down the topic as the voice dictated to me. In a twinkle of an eye, a vehicle at top speed lost control by the junction of ALDC and the university guest house and crashed into the gutter. But for the voice that stopped me on that day and the, the note I was taking for today's lecture, the few steps that possibly I would have taken could have placed me completely at the point of the crash. And with the level of impact done to the plants and the impact on the culvert, the story would have been a different one today. Chancellor, sir, I'm standing here today because the Lord has favored me, and to him alone be the glory. It is a common quote that the spiritual rules the physical. Permit me, Chancellor, to further establish today that the invisible microbial organisms around us rules the physical world. My research into microbiological and nutritional safety of food, captured in today's inaugural lecture as safe food, dominates all of these sustainable development goals. And it is expressly captured in SDG 12, responsible consumption and responsible production. And it is fulfilled in goals 1, 2, 3, 6 to 15, and goal 17 and indirectly implied in goals 4, 5, and 16. The solution to all of the SDGs and to save food lies with microorganisms. And as soon as man is able to align with this group of creatures, all the solution for man to man will be provided. Epistemology of microbiology. Microbiology is a science that deals with the study of all living things, plants and animals, that are too small to be seen with the naked eyes. And these include the bacteria, the fungi, the viruses, the algae, the protozoa, prions, and the archaea family. This group of organisms are ubiquitous in nature. By implication, they can be found almost everywhere in nature, even in extreme environments where other living things cannot thrive. The presence of microorganisms in any environment is an indication that that environment can sustain life. The study of microbiology dates back to 1677, when Antoine van Leeuwenhoek discovered the microscope. And of course, the study of Louis Pasteur in 1822 to 1895 gave speed to this field of study. And today, microbiology is in two major branches, the pure or basic microbiology and the applied field of microbiology. While the pure microbiology deals with the biology of these organisms, the applied microbiology deals with the use of these organisms and their products for the benefit of man. The concept of food microbiology. Food microbiology is one of the applied fields of microbiology that deals with the relationship of microorganisms to food in health and diseases of plants, animals, and human beings. This field of study is an embodiment of several other fields of studies that are related to the cultivation, processing, and utilization of food, and involves dairy microbiology, aquatic, soil, aero, microbial biotechnology, and medical related issues, and agricultural microbiology. By implication, this is an embodiment of field of studies that a journey through the field of food microbiology is regarded and seen as a journey through the do's and don'ts of living a healthy and wealthy life. The adage goes that man is what he eats. And of course, we know that health is wealth. My journey into the field of microbiology and motivation for the field of food microbiology. As a young boy, my mom often talked about germs. And she would always deny me from picking any food that dropped from my hand to the floor to eat. And if I stubbornly do, she will force me to spit out every bit of it. 
And while I was wondering why mom would be treating me this way, she would scream on me. James will kill you, this boy. You will have stomach trouble, and I'll be the one running around to treat you. Mom will refuse to wear slippers while in the, in the house. And if she steps on a grain of sand, definitely she will stop there picking it, and any of me and my siblings around must sweep the floor. She will clean and mop the floor several times in a week, all because of gems that I've never seen. And my, my, my siblings and I must be forced to do the same. And this made me wonder. Initially, I thought it's only adults that see what she's seen. And I hope that someday I will get to see this group of organisms. And that made me develop interest in the field of medicine. And I wanted to study medicine abroad. And the condition is an A-level or a first degree. And so I opted for an A-level in the Federal School of Arts and Science, Sulejia. While on that program, I attended a career course. And there, for the first time, I got to know that the field of medicine will not give me in-depth knowledge as I would have wanted to have over these microorganisms known as GEM. And I also got to know that as a microbiologist, I can work in any field of life and with man, plants, and animals. And from that point, I signed off for this field of study. In the course of my first degree, I was determined to know what this group of microorganisms contribute to man. I, was, I wanted to find out what is the relationship of these microorganisms to man. If men are not dropping dead, as mom has always inter interrupt, interrupted me from consuming foods from the floor, I wanted to know what do they contribute. And in the course of my first degree project, I wanted to look at the relationship of what microorganisms contribute to human health. However, in the wisdom of my supervisor, Professor Bien Okolo, and the mentor he gave me to supervise my work, Professor Lewis Ezugo, I was told that to find such a relationship will entail a lifelong study. And so, that the time given to BSC project cannot accommodate that kind of a study. Popular drink in, on campus then was this set of uh, uh, drinks known as mineral, soft drinks. It's so popular that I was wondering, what is the microbial content? And of course, what is the safety of this group of products? So I decided to work on looking at the microbial safety and nutritional value of soft drinks sold in Nigerian markets. We looked at this group of products and we reported that the microbial nature of this product is safe for human consumption because it's within acceptable international limits. And of course, the organisms isolated, we are mere environmental contaminants. Though even this group of food or drinks are safe microbiologically for consumption, a look at the acidic level of that product shows that they are highly acidic. And of course, in another study, we revealed that the sugar content of that product is so high, such that even though they are microbiologically safe for consumption, nutritionally, they are questionable. This study was reported in a Scopus listed journal in, 20, in 1994. After my first degree, while I was waiting for an, on an uncle for a promised job, my dad told me, young man, if you must make impact in any field of human endeavor and in your field of study, you must strive to get to the zenith of your training in that field. Your mother and I will do anything within our reach to train you. That was an open ticket that I never missed. So I maximized that opportunity. Immediately after my first degree and NYC service, I registered for my master's in ABU. While in ABU, there is this popular drink known as kununzaki. It's popular as it's sold in almost every nook and cranny, and every family you visit will serve it to you. However, you look at literature, so that this product is grossly contaminated. And I love it. So I was wondering, what is the gross contaminant in this product? And of course, this product has a shelf life of about six to eight hours after production. So I was determined to see the microbial content and the safety level of this product, and of course, make it a better drink. So we examined the microbial content of this drink, and we're able to establish, uh, extend the shelf life of this product to over six months under normal room temperature. Also, we were able to detect that the content of this product are mostly fermentative organisms, the lactobacillus. And we report today that lactobacillus are one of those organisms today known as safe 
food. They save microorganisms in human diet. And they're even compounded and sold as probiotics. Notwithstanding that we're able to isolate some potential pathogen in this product, the, the fermentative environment of this product caused by this fermentative organism make the few possible pathogen inconsequential. And so this product is safe for consumption. Beyond that, the research of this work was published also in Scopus Listed Journal in 2003. We worked on this product and we further were able to produce concentrate from this product. And today it's available in Nigeria market and known as powdered kunu mix. And it's a concentrate that two, three spoons into a cup with chilled water will give the best of drinks. Chancellor, sir. At my PhD, the psych of what microorganisms contribute to human life have not left me. So I decided to work on nutritional anthropometry under the topic safe, safety evaluation of foods consumed in boarding schools and selected families. This study entails that we got all the microorganisms associated with food consumed, both as main meal and in between meal, and for the study population. And of course, we determined the energy value and the nutritional value of those food items. And we took anthropometric parameters of this individual, that is their health, their weight, height, and body mass index, and meat ham circumferences. And we tried to correlate and using all ratio cost and effect evaluation to find the relationship between these microorganisms and the anthropometric indices of the consumers. And we report that there was no relationship between the microbial load of the food and the anthropometric parameter of the study subject. However, in the course of this research, we noted that the environmental safety, personal hygiene of the food, persons that produce, prepare food in the schools, we are not in good order. And also we noted that 30% of the school children were underweight. And this was reported to Ministry of Education. And that revolutionized the preparation of food in the boarding school. Also, we noted that the anthropometric indices used to judge Africans is equally not correct. And with that, today, we have local anthropometric standards that are, are in use. This study was also published in a Scopus listed journal in 2003 and 2006. And of course, that gave me an opportunity to contribute to an ongoing project then that seeks to document the anthropometric indices of Africans in health and disease condition. And that document is today also available in the medical use. After my PhD, I was wondering, was there anything left in this group of organisms that I've not known? It dawned on me that I was dealing with food and environmental organisms, and there are so much left in the medical sector. I had to leave the food industry, food industry and register for another three-year training in medical microbiology in the Med School of Medical Laboratory Sciences, and I specialized in bacteriology. And of course, went for my fellowship in medical parasitology. This training gave me in route into the field of medicine. And of course, after 10 years, over a decade in the medical field, something was still aloof in my life. And I noted that I still need more knowledge on this group of organisms. So I went back to the industrial field, registered as a public analyst, specializing in food and water analysis. And of course, took courses in mycology. Along the line of this training, I met with wonderful mentors, colleagues, and mentees. So my movement into the enviable height of a professor was not with too much of a struggle, because the issue with research and publication was a shared responsibility between me and my mentors and colleagues, and of course, my mentees. Kings and queens in Hebron, my advice is for you to get your enviable height. It is easy to get there. However, first build your capacity and have friends that are focused and go where you are going. And you'll get there in Jesus' mighty name. Pedagogical tradition of microbiology. The training and contribution of microbiologists to SDG. The training of a microbiologist for the first degree is a four to six year intensive training involving over 80% practical work. And the entry requirement is a credit pass in mathematics, physics, chemistry, English language, and biology. In the course of our training, courses in this field of subject must be taken. And of course, a lot of courses in biochemistry, computer science, engineering, geography, 
business studies, and every related field. The microbiologist is contributes to all of the SDGs because he is the self-care provider you never get to know or see. Every stool, sample, urine sample, blood sample, biopsies taken from a patient is sent to the laboratory for a microbiologist to analyze and diagnose and find the cause of the ailment. And of course, suggest possible treatment options to the clinician that manages the patient. In diagnosis and in, the, in being able to prevent infection, as we have in COVID pandemic, it is the microbiologist that we analyze to find out what the organisms are and the possible treatment option. And thanks to the microbiologist for the development of antibiotics and vaccines that have made life so easy and cheap for us to live. Also in the industrial field, every product for consumption, every product for human use must have gone through microbiological quality control by the microbiologist. In the medical sector, every drug, every personal care product have to go through microbiological quality control if they must be good for any use. In the petroleum industry, the microbiologist is involved in prospecting, extraction, and even biocatalysis and conversion in the petroleum industry. And of course, what the magic we are seeing in the agricultural sector today is because the microbiologists are there to diagnose plant and animal diseases and profile treatment solutions. The entire of biotechnology is about manipulation of microorganisms for the use of man. Chancellor, sir, permit me to state that the microbiologist is at the top of our safety 247. And also note that human development note that human development, industrialization, and of course global trade is only possible today because the microbiologists have found how to preserve food, and that is the benefit we are all enjoying today. Chancellor, sir, permit me at this point to establish the concept of today's inaugural lecture, safe food for sustainable development of the packets of microorganisms guided by divine essence. As a food microbiologist and from the nutrition, perspe nutrition perspective, food are classified based on the quantity of specific nutritional composition they contain as either carbohydrate, proteinous food, fatty food, vitamin-rich food, or mineral-rich foods. The implication is that a carbohydrate food is richer in carbohydrate, but contain protein, fats, minerals, and other components. So also it's a proteinous food. It contains a lot of carbohydrates and other minerals and vitamins. The, in material science, a chemist will simply classify a material based on the highest concentration of a specific element. That does not mean that it doesn't contain other impurities and other substances. The human system is dominated by microorganisms. Earlier reports have it that, micro that man is made up of 10 times microorganisms than human cells. And a conservative estimate of modern research and documentation shows that the average man contains approximately 30 trillion human cells. This same individual contains approximately 31 trillion bacterial cells. And more viral cells or viruses than even the bacteria so on a conservative estimate, another 31 trillion viruses. The fungi and RK family put together constitute another 31 trillion RK and, my, and viral, um, fungi cells. When you put that together, you find out that you are having over 90 trillion microbial cells to 30 trillion human cells in an average man. That is a ratio of one human cell to three microbial cells. So the question is, what is man in reality? We are simply a pack of microorganisms. And the only difference is the divine essence, the breath of life in us that makes the difference. And for that, we must be grateful to God to making us what we are today. Chancellor, sir, Genesis 2 verse 7 captured it clearly. The Lord God formed man of the dust of ground and did what? Breathed the breath of life, the spiritual content into man. If you look at dust, Dust is purely over 90% microorganisms. Thus, without the divine essence in that pack called man, there is nothing like man. We are worth nothing. And for that, we must remain grateful to the almighty God. Chancellor, sir, permit me to establish the concept of safe food. Food is anything eaten, digested, and assimilated in the body for the purpose of obtaining nutrients. 
Thus, safe food is that food that contains all nutrients in adequate proportion, safe from unacceptable level of radiation, safe from unacceptable level of chemical contaminants, and safe from unacceptable level of physical contaminants, and of course, microbial load and microbial product that we compromise that food and make it un un unhealthy for human consumption. Thus, the concept of food, safe food, is hinged on responsible consumption of safe food and responsible production of safe food as captured in SDG 12. And this is the key and life wire upon which man is able to attain all of the other SDGs. Chancellor, sir, let me also submit today that the environment of unsafe food leaves us with only the microbial content and weakened immune system. And the microorganisms we are naturally made up of simply take over and we have sickness and diseases. Also, because of the spiritual content, the divine essence in us, the environment of sin will also force the spiritual content to move out. And the only thing left is the microbial load, which simply degrade the, the few cells of human being. And that is simply the relationship why sin and poor nutrition produce the same effect, sickness and diseases. The only divine, it's only the divine presence in this pack of microorganisms called man that makes the difference. If you remove that divine essence from this pack, you find that you are left with nothing other than microbes, and we must eternally remain grateful to God. Chancellor, sir, Genesis 2, 1 to 10, noted that man was the last thing to be created. The implication is that food and microbes were already in existence before man was created. And if they were, it means they were interacting even before man came into existence. However, there appear to be no documented evidence as to the exact point in time man saw microorganisms in food. However, there were indications that man have this concept that there are other living things that is around his environment. And as such, we have this record that man ate fresh food at inception. And at a point in time, hunters gathered food, seasonally available food, and preserved them using drying, salting, and of course smoking what, in essence, they are trying to prevent spoilage. The work of Louis Pasteur in 1822 to 1895 was the first person, he was the first person to appreciate the presence of, man, the understand the presence of microorganisms in food, where he discovered that beer and milk were spoiled at this little life. And he was the first person to propose the term microbiology for the study of this group of organisms. He was also the best person to scientifically use the principle of fermentation to preserve food and also use heat to preserve food, preventing these microorganisms from spoiling food. And that feat of heat treatment is today known as pasteurization, which is a feat in the food and processing industry. One will wonder, why are we interested in this relationship between food and microorganisms? This is simply because the food we eat are not sterile. There are organisms in this food that are needed, that we need to maintain and, in, and increase their quantity. Also in this food, there are organisms that are not needed at all that can cause problems to us. So a knowledge of this relationship will help us to maximize our food and the organisms. It helps us to develop mechanisms by which the food that, the organisms that need to be maintained and increased can be increased and maintained, and those that needed to be removed can be removed. And that does help us to set appropriate microbiological standards for our food. This relationship between food and microorganisms is in threefold. They can cause spoilage of the food, they can cause foodborne diseases, and of course, they can create beneficial effects for human beings. In the relationship of food spoilage, the record have it that microorganisms can spoil food right there in the farm, during the harvest, post-harvest, during processing, during preservation, during storage, and even at the point of consumption. And that is why this field of study is very, very important. We have that over 1.3 billion food, tons of food are wasted annually due to microbial spoilage. The implication is that all the effort, all the material put in to produce this food are equally wasted. And in fact, even the destruction created by agricultural practices are all in vain. And the final consumer don't get to get these items for consumption. We have this record from, that shows that African is the least producer of food around the whole world. And on that, 
we also have the highest rate of microbial spoilage. And the implication is that only very little quantity of what we even produce in Africa get to the final consumer. They can also cause spoilage, I mean, cause foodborne diseases. World Health Organization have this staggering record that 420,000 lives are lost annually due to foodborne infection. And of this, children below five years of age have the highest proportion of death. Africa has the highest proportion of this record with 137,000 lives lost annually. Diarrhea disease is one of the major consequences of foodborne infection. And that is known to claim whooping some of 96,000 children annually. In Nigeria's fair, Ministry of Health has been able to document that over 200,000 lives are lost annually due to foodborne poisoning. It is a common scene in Nigeria where a whole family is wiped out after meals overnight. Also added to this record is 45% of other deaths associated to children as a result of nutritional deficiency. And over 1.9 billion adults suffer from nutritional deficiency. And that is why this field of study is necessary. They can also help us. All about microorganisms in food is not deleterious. They can help us to create varieties out of our food. They can help us create acceptable food. And of course, they help to detoxify food because most of the raw material, raw food we, we, we are supposed to consume are very poisonous. It's only microorganisms that help us to detoxify them. And of course, they enhance flavor in our food. Chancellor, sir, a look at the Nigerian scene shows that all our food, specifically from the cereal, from tubers, from legumes, and from milk and milk-based food, are all as a result of microbial production. The implication is that if you look at those food there, they are all our cultural heritage. So without the microorganisms, we really don't have any cultural heritage. Thanks be to the good of my microorganisms. All the cocoa and coffee uh, beverages in the market, and even our tea, are all product of microbial activities. Microorganisms are also consumed as food, as probiotics and single cell protein. The survey of microorganisms in food. Where are all these microorganisms coming from? The plant and animals we use as food have natural flora. They have natural microorganisms, so they serve as the first point of contamination to our food. The air, the sewage, the soil, water, Human beings are major contaminants of food. Equipment, the food transport system we use, food ingredients, and also packaging material, and even rodents and insects in the home, all contribute to microbial issues in our food. All hope is not lost. These microorganisms can be, quality, can be controlled using quality control measures. And this can be in several points. At the point of taking the raw material, if we choose a raw material that is microbiological and nutritionally safe, and the processing parameters are right, we are going to get good product. Also, along the line of processing, microorganisms can easily be quality controlled, and also nutritional parameters can be checkmated. At the final stage, before it gets to the consumer, during retail, retail and even as storage, microorganisms and nutritional issues can be checkmated. To do this, a combination of methods are needed to order to be able to achieve quality control in the food and food products. Education and training is necessary to train the food handlers on the steps to take. Also, inspection of facilities and operation, and microbiological and nutritional quality check at point of processing. The hazard analysis critical control point, which is a predictive model, can be used. The implication is that this model is able to predict the hazard of nutritional and microbiological issue and appropriate measures put in place even before they occur. Chancellor, sir, at this point, let me give some of my contribution to knowledge in this field of food safety, nutritional safety, and of course, chemical safety, specifically the mycotoxin safety. We looked into beverages, food condiments, ready to eat food, water and drinks, fresh and raw food, fruits and fruit juices, and of course, the process of treating food waste. In the area of beverages, Apart from the mineral report, apart from the Kununzeki report, we also examine all the coffee and cocoa beverages in Nigerian market and the tea. And we report that the, all these products meet standard microbiological pres prescription by world standard. However, some of them we are noted to have high water activity level. And the implication of that is that some of the products we have found 
to have microorganisms that are not supposed to be in the food, specifically the coliform. So when we take our products, we must take them from the right food source because some of these products can easily, they are hygroscopic and they absorb moisture from the environment. So when we use things like refill products, we must store them well to avoid microbial proliferation in these products. We also look at condiments. Accepted that most of our Nigerian condiments are fermented food and so should have high microbial load of fermentative organism. We isolated some potential pathogen and more importantly, these products supported the growth of fungi and fungi produce mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are carcinogens that can cause cancer. And of course, we analyzed some of our food condiments and noted that some of them contain mycotoxin at high level that is not good for human consumption. And when we pick our condiments, let's pick fresh condiments and of course from the rightful source. Salt is one of the condiments that is only like an universal currency. But this product, salt, can also create microbiological and nutritional problems for man. There are organisms known as halophiles. They can easily survive in salt. And of course, the salt can serve as transient um, um, uh, issue to be able to transmit microorganisms to food. And also, we have that salt is also used to carry iodine to be able to meet with the nutritional need of the public. This iodine has been traced to have a lot of benefits, specifically in pregnancy and childhood development. We examine all the salt in the Nigerian market and report that all of them meet the microbiological standard. However, they all fa failed in the iodination program. The implication is that they are nutritionally not, not meeting the nutritional requirement of the populace. Also, we looked at, at issues relating to flour and flour products. These are products that World Health Organization and other agencies use to transmit vitamin A and iron to prevent vitamin A and iron deficiency. We report that all our flour in the Nigerian market meet with the microbiological standard. However, they all failed in vitamin A and iron fortification. So the implication is they are also not nutritionally good for human consumption. We looked at some spices and report that some of our spices have high microbial load. And when we pick spices, now we have a lot of them in the Nigerian market because of our porous borders. We must also be sure of what we consume. In this field of food condiment, we have made contribution because our Iru Ogiri Uba, which normally serve, do not have a shelf life beyond one week. Today we have products that can stay six months on the shelf and we have used them to be able to carry nutritional benefit of lactic acid bacteria that are good for human health. We looked at street vended food and ready to eat food. Man is what he eats and today most of us have taken our, have handed over our life to food vendors along the street and street corners. We looked at some food hogged by these food vendors and we report that some of them, though they meet nutritional need and the job issue that is a problem in the country, but some of these food have microorganisms that shouldn't be in our food. We looked at a five year record and we, we noted that some of these foods contain microorganisms that are having high level of resistance to available, available antibiotics. The implication is consuming this food and we have any challenge with any of these organisms, they will be difficult to treat because they are multi-resistant. So we must be sure of what we consume. Snacks and snacks products, they are things we easily pick around us because they are readily available. They, these are products from flour and they are, during the production style, they are easily handled. The handling process is enormous. And they, some of them contain sandwiches, these which do not go through heat treatment. And so they are veritable source for foodborne infection. We analyze some of the products available around us and we report that some of them contain microorganisms that shouldn't be there. And so when we pick our snacks and products like that, we must be very careful. Let's pick fresh products and of course those of good quality. We looked at products hooked in some of our bad spots on the road. These individuals do not have any training on food handling processes, but these are individuals that we buy from on the highways. We looked at some of the products and selected organisms even as bad as salmonella, which shouldn't be in our food. And so when we are on the highway and consume these products, even though these sellers have job because of lack of job opportunity, these are practices that we should not encourage. We looked at fruits and fruit juices. We recognize that some of our food contain microorganisms that are not good for human health. Things like carrot, as simple as they may look, they have what we call nose and internals, that's the eyes. 
Some of these products are cultivated with sewage, and they easily trap microorganisms. So common washing or easy washing without scraping out may not give us a good meal. Our apple, as smooth as they look like, also contain high microbial load because of handling processes. We looked at fortification program. When you add more nutrients to food, you have more microorganisms growing because these organisms need the same nutrients. We looked at the common man's food, known as gari those days, and we tried to increase the nutritional value of gari to make it a, a, bet, a good meal for the common man. We used soy protein to fortify it to increase the protein value. We report that we have soy fortified protein, uh, gari in the Nigerian market today that has good microbial load, low cyanide content, and of course, with good nutritional value of high protein content. Some of our fresh food in the Nigerian market, specifically the grains, we reported that some of them have high level of mycotoxins. And we developed a simple, mean of a simple process to process this food using nanoparticles from lemongrass and of course, montnolanite clay. The montnolanite clay is safe for human consumption and lemongrass are safe for human consumption. And the fusion of these two products was able to decontaminate our products and free from mycotoxins. Water and drinks from factories, we are taking from off from the factory line. And we report that the water analyzed all failed microbiological standards. However, they were good by chemical standards. So our pure water is really not pure indeed. We looked at issues relating to food waste management. Food waste, if not appropriately managed, become a point for microorganisms to equally come back to the food and it become a vicious circle. We were able to develop using microorganisms to ferment this food waste and produce animal feed that compete favorably with other best feed in the market. We were able to, able to produce biofuels by using microorganisms to digest the, the food waste. And today, we have industries using our recipe to be able to manage waste in their organization. Chancellor, sir, permit me to further state that the food we consume in Nigeria and Africa are not necessarily poor microbiologically. Over 50% of our food have good microbiological standard and they are not nutritionally poor. The bane of Nigerian food is simply environmental and personal sanitation problem of the food, man food handlers. And it is easy to handle with education, training of these food handlers, regular inspection of food processing facilities, and of course, enforcement of food safety rule. Today, my field of research have produced a lot of postgraduate students from the splinter research products I have. Dr. Aho Tundidamaka is into food fortif fortification and she's doing well. We have Associate Professor Kenneth Mwaleli who is into dairy microbiology and doing well. Professor Danusi is one of the authorities, leading authority in the area of biofuel production from agricultural waste and he's doing well. Dr. Lapade was trained in mycotoxicology while Dr. Heret Boko is doing well in the area of microbiome and health and, health and diseases. Elizabeth Onubeku and Onokpana are doing well in the animal food production industry. While the brainchild be, behind the condiment that is now to be in the market very soon is Dokas Obafemi. She's also doing well. Chancellor, sir, in conclusion, when God speaks, living and non-living things here, including microorganisms, and microorganisms are veritable tools in the hand of God for good, and for the benefit of man. Good health for man lies with obedience to safe food and, of course, sin-free life. In the presence of this, we have divine and, immune and natural immune protection. Poor health, full of sickness and disease, is only found when we have, don't have natural immunity and divine immunity. My recommendation, Chancellor, the way forward is education and education, which cannot be overemphasized. We need to train the food handlers in food management system, good manufacturing practices, and of course, the hazard analysis, critical control issues. Inspection of the facilities cannot be overemphasized, and regular microbiological testing of our food. Standardization of our local produced food in terms of packaging, quality control, and of course, promotion of our local food. The habit we have now of promoting foreign food against our own food is not healthy. Let me note that a cup of our sobo, a cup of our tiger nut drink, our smoothie, are richer than any of these sugar water in the, in, the, in the market today. Also, producing our local produced salads are richer, microbiologically and nutrition-wise. We must learn to patronize our own food. Chancellor, sir, more detailed research is needed in this area of food for us to tell our own stories. We must research into microbiological issue and nutritional issue. And my inauguration today into this field of professorship will help me 
It's a clarion call for me to do more in this field of research. But to be able to achieve this, Chancellor, more laboratories need to be established for the Department of Biological Sciences to further accommodate food laboratory. Most of our safety evaluation and toxicity tests need animal models to, to be able to achieve that. The completion and equipping of the animal house will help in no small measure. Deliberate efforts should, can be made by Covenant University to maximize the potential in the young chaps in the secondary and primary network of schools of the, of the church platform to be able to bring them into this field of study and they will be our posterity. Acknowledgement. Chancellor, sir, the Lord has done me so well. He is the, he is the one that has protected me and kept me alive till this day. He protected me from several accidents that should have claimed my life. And of course, from several robbery attacks that could have claimed my life. He also protected me from the accident that even gave birth to today's inaugural lecture topic. Growing up in Lokoja was a fun. And I could remember losing two friends to the river Niger tide when three of us were swimming in the same river. To God be the glory for the gift of life. Permit me to salute individuals that God has used to bless me and move me to this lofty height. The Chancellor of Covenant University, Bishop David Oyedepo, for creating this platform that has raised giants and still raising giants. I salute and appreciate the pro-Chancellor, Bishop David Abioye. His charge to us in one of the evangelism outreach in 1997 is still speaking in my life today. I salute the Board of Regents, the Secretary to the Board, the CST Management Team, and the Vice Chancellor and the acting registrar. Thank you for all the effort and the opportunity given me to serve the university in leadership position. I appreciate and appreciate the past vice chancellors who gave me also a platform to serve the university in management position. To the past and present registrars, I thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to serve the university. The past DVCs, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve. The past and present deans, College of Science and Technology, Thank you for the opportunity to serve under your able leadership. I also thank all the CST members for the opportunity given me. I thank all the deans. Dr. Olushego Midiora, thank you for being there for me, even at my point of most need. I also salute Pastor Victor Hill, the current chaplain. Your lecture or your message on Tuesday, 29th March, 2022, aptly captured today's inaugural lecture. God bless you, sir. My profound gratitude goes to my destiny molders and helpers. First on this list are my parents, Elder John and late Deaconess Antonio Oranusi. You taught me the dignity of labor and the virtue of contentedness. The Lord bless you for all labor of love. To my teachers in primary secondary and secondary schools, specifically my CRK teacher, the present bishop of Olu Diocese, his grace, B.C.I. Okoro, whom God used to put me in the course of life, and to my uncle, Savayoko Achinifu, who contributed much to my training all through life. To my supervisors, Professor Bion Okolo and Vice Chancellor, former Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, and my supervisors at the postgraduate level, Professor Vijay Umo, Galadima, and Onyike of ABU, I thank you all. And to my mentors, Professor Louis Ezigo and Professor Alexander Daibo, who I'm graced sure to have in our midst today. Prof, I thank you for being there for me. I also thank Professor Kori of University of Ibadan. To my friends, turned brothers, Professor Lo Sulu, I thank you for being there for me. I appreciate my international and local collaborators in research. You have all benefited me in no small measure. I salute my previous and current professional colleagues for their contributions to my life. I appreciate my colleagues in the Department of Biological Sciences and Biochemistry. The immediate HOD of Biological Sciences, Professor Grace Olasha, and they thank you for being there for me. The leadership you gave to the department made my current work as HOD easy. HOD Biochemistry for Professor Folabi, I thank you, sir. The past inaugural lectures of Biosciences depart uh, Department, Professor Chinedu, Obembe, and Iwiala, thank you for setting up the pace and making me have smooth ride. I also appreciate Professor Gulano and Associate Professor Eni. You were both for me there at the most point of my need. To God be the glory for your lives. I appreciate all members of Biological Sciences, BCH, CST family, and the Covenant University family for your love for me. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. I also salute my classmates at the primary, secondary, and university level. They have been in touch with me these 45 years. Dr. Deglan Umege, thank you for being, for being there for me. To God be the glory for your life. 
I also appreciate my sister, Professor, Luko, Professor Bimbo Urukoto. Thank you, my sister, for being there for me. God bless you, man. To God be the glory for the life of my, sec of my university classmate, Professor Damisa Duro. He passed on to glory the very night he was announced a professor. To God be the glory for his life. He fought a good fight of faith. I also thank members of the IMNN. Dr. Lawa, you are welcome, sir. I appreciate you for being there for me and the powerful ESCO. To all the bows, all my bows in security unit of Faith Tabernacle, I appreciate you all for honoring my invitation. To the members of the CCTV and Squad 11 and all members of the Faith Tabernacle security, I thank you for being there for me. To my spiritual family, members of Block 9, Flat 908, Winner Satellite Fellowship, the Febocans, the Wheelers, the Circles, the Guerives, thank you for being there for me in prayer. God bless you all. I thank my, the, my family members, Edward, Blessing, Hope, and Gladys. Thank you for your show of love. To my angels, Dr. Uloma Chikori, thank you for being there and for your patience. <laughs> to Peace Love, Modupe, the baby of the house, thank you for your love. I thank my daughter, Ibukun, uh, <laughs> Glory, and also my son, David Uluagbemiga, God bless you all. I appreciate all the committee members from the department and, of course, the university that have made this occasion a success. To Dr. Abraham Oweshane, the man behind the slide, God bless you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with this few points from my research effort, I hope that you are all convinced and not confused that the food consumed by Nigerians are not grossly contaminated, neither are they nutritionally deficient. And also you are convinced today that man is not only ruled by the microbial world. Man is indeed a packet of microorganisms. And we only thank God for the gift of life that has made us enjoy the benefit of life more than every other living creature. Thank you for honoring me, and God bless you. May we please be seated. I'm sure you have been served very good menu in the course of that lecture. That was Professor Solomon Oranusi delivering his 28th inaugural lecture. Can we once again put our hands together for him? His lecture was quite loaded and very impactful. And glad enough, he ended on a very promising note. Once again, can we put our hands together for him? Thank you, sir. At this juncture, it's my privilege again to respectfully invite to the podium the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo, to bring us his closing remarks. Can we please put our hands together for our Vice Chancellor? Thank you so much, the moderator. Again, that was a very great lecture, well delivered, highly stimulating. Can we again put our wonderful hands together for the 28th inaugural lecturer of Covenant University? And you have not disappointed us today, Professor Solomon Oranusi. Thank you so much for taking us through the world of microorganism. Indeed, he called it packets of microorganisms. And there's no doubt that the intellectual sagacity that we have witnessed from the safe food from, for sustainable development today will propel us to begin to make right choices. And uh, one more time, let's put our wonderful hands together for him. From the lecture, you will note that there are two categories of microorganisms. We have the normal microorganism, which you call normal flora, and we equally have the pathogenic microorganism. 
even though I'm not a microbiologist, but from the lecture today, I think I'm qualified to be called a microbiologist. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. But more importantly, he has made wonderful recommendations. Uh, first, to us as Covenant University, and that we need to begin to take right steps in the right direction in making our own contributions known in order to live in a in safe world, we even in the midst of the packets of microorganisms that we all live in, like you have heard. Uh, that the normal flora, that is the normal microorganisms, the we are we cannot but live with them. In fact, even the food we eat, they will equally help to digest the food very well. In your gut, they are there. Within you, they are there. In your fufu, they are there. In your ugi, they are there. That's what he has just delivered to us today. And as a university, I like to assure you that we will begin to we will strengthen our research focus to begin to be more impactful in delivery, particularly within our community as a goal. I'd like to let you know, even as I close with this remark, that a friend of mine recently told me, who is a renowned consultant, he went out and bought on the roadside a corn. He had never been hospitalized as long as he knew he was a man. But the, about two days later, he landed on the hospital bed. The same bed that he used in treating his own patient. Why? Because of packets of microorganisms. And he said to me, corn, just a corn, landed me into the hospital bed. And what are the inferences that we begin to draw from here? It means that we need to strengthen our local vendors, food vendors, whether local or wherever, at the restaurants and all of that. Government will need to wake up and do the right thing. In the past, we used to have inspectorate officers even visit your home to check how your beds are laid, to check if your plates are washed. That's the kind of community we lived in. But these days, we no longer have them. They go to marketplaces. They inspect food at that time to begin to see the foods that are not in conformity with the normal standards. I think government, we need to wake up. They need to strengthen the local community to live to their responsibility. And as a university, our community impact initiative and awareness will all equally be strengthened in this direction. Again, I'd like to appreciate the 28th inaugural lecturer for today for doing justice to this topic. And I'd like on this note to appreciate all our visitors that have traveled far and near to be part of this lecture. It's my prayer that the good Lord we return you back to your various destination. Again, thank you for coming and God bless you. Can we please once again appreciate the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, <laughs> Professor Abiodun He Shadebayo. We are gradu gradually winding down at this um, prestigious event. At this juncture, it's my privilege again to invite to the podium Professor Timothy Anake to bring us the vote of thanks. Can we put our hands together for him? The Vice Chancellor, sir, all protocols duly observed. Thank you is a prayer that is only felt in the heart. It cannot be touched, it cannot be seen, and so it is an honor for me to be asked to move this vote of thanks to Professor Ranusi for this inaugural lecture. Let me begin by thanking the Almighty God whose mercy and gift of life have made this inaugural lecture 
a reality today. No doubt, Professor Ranusi has done a great job of treating us to the science and application of microorganisms in food safety and wealth creation. He also enumerated some challenges regarding our own context, and I'm sure you agree to that. And so it's on this note that on behalf of Covenant University, the College of Science and Technology, the Department of Biological Sciences, I thank Professor Ranusi for the stimulating, inciting, and illuminating lecture. We're indeed fortunate to have you give your inaugural lecture today. I most respectfully will appreciate the Chancellor in absentia and all other members of the Board of Regents who would have joined us online. As I go on, I thank the management of Covenant University led by the Vice Chancellor, other principal officers, the Senate, faculty, staff, queens, and kings in Hebron for attending this event and for all the support that made today a success. I appreciate the members of the ceremonies committee, as led by Professor Adeke, for diligently putting things in place for the success of this lecture. The thanks would not be without an appreciation to Dr. Mrs. Chika Oranusi, the wife of the inaugural lecturer, his children, extended family members, friends, and well-wishers who have come from far and near, and all those who have joined us online to mark this historic event. To our special guests and the media, we sincerely appreciate your presence. Thanks to all of you for making this event memorable. I wish you all God's journey mercies as you travel back to your various destinations. God bless you all. Thank you. Please, can we once again appreciate the Dean of College of Science and Technology, Professor Annake. At this point, with the permission of the Vice Chancellor, I would like to recognize some of our special guests who have come to honor this day uh, with the guests, with the inaugural lecturer as well as the, the university. Dr. Mrs. Chika Oranusi, again, the wife of the inaugural lecturer. Welcome, Yuma, and your children, please. Can we please put our hands together for her? <laughs> Mr. Declan Umeije, sir, please, can we see you? Thank you, sir, for coming. God bless you, sir. Dr. Esther Amushon, can you rise for recognition? Thank you for coming. You are most welcome, ma. Professor Samuel Olatunde Dahunsi, you are welcome, sir. Mr. Joseph Uboke, I hope I got that correctly. Is he anywhere in sight? You are welcome, sir, wherever you are seated. God bless you, sir. Professor Benita Uru Kotun, you are welcome. Thank you very much, ma, for coming. Dr. Lawal, A.O. Lawal, you are most welcome, sir. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Mrs. Mabel Iyere, she here. Thank you, ma, for coming. You are welcome, ma. Mrs. Ophili Fumnaya Johnson, thank you for coming. God bless you. We'll be receiving your valued contributions at the cocktail that will be taking place immediately after this event. For the avoidance of doubt, please, the cocktail for our special guests and the principal officers of the university will take place at the CLR, Center for Learning Resources. For Senate members and our special guests, CLR, Center for Learning Resources, directly opposite this building, please. Our officials will guide you in case you don't get to that point. I've been asked by the inaugural lecturer to announce to our students that you'll be served light refreshment immediately after this event. Please, we want to ask you that after this event, please remain seated where you are. Our officials will direct you to the point outside this room, not inside here, outside this room, where you'll be served your refreshment. All right, please, I'll have the honor again to invite the chaplain of Covenant University, Pastor Victor Hill, to lead us in closing prayers. Please, 
Immediately after the closing prayers, we shall be having the procession in reverse order while I enjoin everyone seated to remain standing at that point until the university management principal officers and esteemed professors exit this room. Thank you once again for coming. God bless you. Our chaplain, sir. Shall we rise to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for the success of this lecture this afternoon. We, will, we return all glory unto you, Lord. Blessed be the name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for impartation. Thank you for revelation of knowledge via this lecture today. Thank you for opening our eyes to deep things of life. Blessed be the name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we go forth from here, we go with your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. The remaining hours of the day is blessed for us in the name of Jesus Christ. And the glory of the Lord shall never depart from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. For in Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please, in a standing position, the CU Bound will lead us in the CU Anthem before the procession will begin in reverse order. CU Band, please. Thank you, see you, Ben. Please, can we begin the procession in reverse order? That is our Vice Chancellor leading the procession in reverse order, Professor Abiodun H. Adebayo. Following him very closely is the Acting Registrar of Covenant University, Mr. Emmanuel Iban. We have our distinguished deans of our colleges. We have our esteemed professors from different departments. Following them very closely are the heads of departments, principal officers of the university, senators here present, and members of management. Congratulations to Covenant University for the 28th inaugural lecture today. We give God all the glory. Please, I would like us to remain standing until the procession is over. Congratulations to our esteemed professors. Congratulations to Covenant University. Thank you very much, our guests, for your patience, and thank you for honoring our invitation.
Thank you very much. See you, Ban. Please, can our students remain seated, please? Our guests, please.